click, click, click. Hello everyone and welcome to BHT Studios. Today we'll be taking a look at this uh, new Sigma lens that's behind the X-Pro3. Oh, check this out. This is the um, the square hood hood for the 35 f1.4. Isn't that awesome? Look at that. And also this is uh, square hood brass thumb rest and retro photo reading shutter button on my X-Pro3 in Dura Black. I love this combination here. And uh, yeah, here we're here for the Sigma, right? And so a lot of you guys know um, I actually did uh, switch over to the Sigma 18 to 50 f 2.8 after doing a pretty concise test comparing this against the Tamron 17 to 70 f 2.8 as well as Fujifilm's own 18 to 55 uh, f 2.8 to f 4 and the uh, professional the red label 16 to 55 f 2.8 and after everything was done and said uh, the the 16 to 55 2 from Fujifilm and the Tamron 70 to 70 f 2.8 optically were superior uh, by a smidge over this lens but ultimately I wanted size and weight for my studio and right now I'm actually shooting uh, this video with the 16 to 80 f4 which was my studio lens for many years until this came along and so this basically replaced the lens I'm using right now but to shoot this video I needed to hold this lens so I had to switch back to the 16 to 80 but uh, this has become my main lens and I always wanted this uh, to have a companion lens uh, something that was wider and so when Tamron came out with their 11 to 20 super excited about this lens I ultimately just ended up uh, letting Chris uh, Janakis Chris meets Chris to use it because he really loved this for vlogging and right here I have my my faithful 10 to 24 f4 that I've traveled the world with this lens here but I wanted Sigma to create something that would basically kind of match up to this lens in the ultra wide field and of course they did so with this new lens here the 10 to 18 f 2.8 DCDN and so it perfectly complements this lens here and so let's uh, start the unboxing right away and so actually there's a couple things here so it's a 67 mil filter thread and it's the part of the contemporary series and here we go for Fujifilm X mount and we'll see it on the lens as well but uh, unlike a lot of Japanese camera manufacturers uh, Sigma still makes all of their lenses thus far made in Japan and so that's actually it, it's kind of a selling point as well and so let's open this up looks like all the other contemporary series lenses decent packaging uh, we have the this huge, uh, I think they've been doing this for decades, just like the, it's like, a, it's not even a booklet, it's this huge fold out in multiple languages, so it's a little bit inconvenient uh, to read, but uh, you have this here, and I guess this is like a warranty or some kind of a promise, new concept, new line, sure, uh, you guys just want to see the lens, right? As do I. And so here's the packaging here, no more styrofoam, which is nice and just opens up like this. Man, this lens is tiny. So let's uh, take this lens out and let's just take out the lens hood. So let's just kind of organize all this here. Grab the lens hood over here. All right, and so all this packaging, there should be nothing else to this. All right, so let's uh, actually, first of all, look at these two lenses, take the lens hood off and so you could see the resemblance between these two, definitely sibling lenses, the design is the same, it has that kind of industrial, like the lens caps are kind of weird, very industrial, very plain, and in the front here, as you can see, it's kind of like a hidden text until you kind of move it, can you see that? And so on the bottom here, it says made in Japan, and on the top here, I can barely see it there, can you see that there? Then it gives you all the, the specs of the lens over here. And that's the same with the with the 18 to 50 uh, 18 to 50. See that's kind of hidden. So in terms of styling, it has this industrial look, which I like. And man alive, look how it's even smaller than the 18 to 50. Look how tiny this is. And we'll compare it with the other two lenses as well. But so far, very impressed with the build quality. Um, one thing is this does use the reverse. So at 18, the lens is, is zoomed back, and at 10, it actually moves forward. So this is kind of a weird design. I'm not used to it. I think the, the Tamron does the same. And let's just see this here. I think the Tamron does the same here. Yeah, see, the Tamron does the same. At 20, it's zoomed in, 
and at 11. So maybe it uses similar optical design, perhaps. But this, let's take a look at this again. And here's the lens hood. And I think there was a thing about this lens hood where it's no longer a twist and lock. It's just push in. There you go. So that will kind of get take time getting used to see now I don't even how do you take it off also it's a very slight twist so you kind of push it in it's on and then you twist it slightly and then take it off and so I think it looks handsome I think uh, of these uh, lens manufacturers that make these uh, plastic lens hoods because of that little that kind of that ribbing on the hood it makes it feel a little bit more premium in general, uh, I still might not use it, but even with it on, I think it looks pretty handsome. So let's just take that off. And again, let's just put it next to the 18 to 50. So look at that. Basically, you go from 10 to 18, and then 18 to 50. Maybe just go this way here. There we go. So uh, 10 to 18, 18 to 50. What a great combination. F2.8 constant. And so, if you are a Fujifilm show, and it's nice that they pretty much launch this about the same time as the Sony and the Leica L mount in APS-C crop mode. And you know, if you want a, a quick overview, optically it's going to be the same as the Sony and the and the Leica L mount. But, you know, check it out. Most It seems like most people with Sonys were using full-frame Sonys in crop mode. I think Gordon Lang, I'll, I'll put his video linked down below. He did a pretty concise test on this lens here and sort of what I kind of noticed with even this 18 to 50 compared to the Tamron and Fujifilm's own native is about the same which is optically this isn't going to be as good as the Tamron but uh, you could forgive it because of its size and weight. In fact let's just take a look at the the size wise let's just take the lens cap off the Tamron here I mean look at that right so obviously you are getting a, a slightly wider range, 11 to 20, so you don't go as wide with this one. And I did notice the difference, uh, check my video where I compare the Tamron to the Fujifilm for vlogging as well as with the Viltrox 13mm f1.4. I did notice that I, I noticed a difference between 11 and 10. There is a, a, a difference. And so I even said in that video, I'd rather go a little bit wide than a little bit more telephoto. And this going to 18, you guys know that 28mm equivalent is my favorite focal length. So this going to from 10 to 18 uh, is pretty darn sweet. But again, look at the size. Uh, it's it's quite a significant difference, and so and then when you compare it against the uh, Fujifilm's own 10 to 24, uh, you know, let's just take the lens cap off here with this lens. 10 to 24 again, a huge difference, but this also has uh, optical image stabilization, and it goes to 24, but it's also f4. And this lens has been with me all over the world. This has been my most used Fujifilm lens. In fact, when I travel, I typically travel with the 10 to 24, and then I take like a 30, like a prime. And right now, my main prime is going to be the 3514. So these two would pretty much cover everything that I need when I'm traveling. And now with this uh, 10 to uh, 10 to 18, I think between uh, between this. And this, I could probably pretty much cover everything I need. So let's, first of all, pop this on the uh, X-T5 here and see what it looks like. Here we go. So X-T5 with the 10 to 18. I mean, look how compact that is. It's already, again, even with the 10, even with the 18 to 50, it's so compact. But this is even more compact. And when you put the lens hood on here, it just actually looks pretty handsome. What do you guys think? Pretty darn handsome. Great for vlogging if you are a vlogger, especially getting that 2.8. You put an ND, a variable ND filter on here, but as well as for landscape, I've done street photography, quite a bit of street photography with, with this 10 to 24. I'll insert a couple of my favorite photos, but you know, you can shoot street with an ultra wide lens, and there are some situations where having something ultra wide is great. So I am looking forward to traveling with this lens and seeing what I can pull off. And because of the size and weight of these things that are reasonably small, I don't mind actually carrying this, this, and the 3514. I think that would be great. So um, really looking forward to using this. And another thing I want to do is actually just weigh the lenses here. So I do have a scale here. Thank you, Chris from Revolver Coffee for giving this a uh, Fancy Pants coffee scale here. So let's just zero this out. And let's just have this lens only, no caps, no no, no front or rear caps. This is the Sigma 10 to 18 f 2.8 constant. 
and we are getting 249 grams on here, all right? And so I think that is what Sigma says on their website. Now this is the Tamron 11 to 20 f2.8, and this one here is 335.5 grams, so definitely heavier, and you can feel it. And finally, I think this will probably be the heaviest, Fujifilm XF 10 to 24, and this is 405.4. It is F4, has a wider range, and it has optical image stabilization. And as I mentioned, this also has a well, that it's not a marked aperture ring. The new version is, and the new version is actually WR. This one here is not marked, but you do have an external aperture ring and access to uh, very like turning I uh, OIS on and off over here, and as well as aperture auto mode over here. And so this is a really well built, mostly metal lens. So I'm not really trying to compare build quality, but in just terms of size and weight again. So 405, three something, and 249. So that's a huge difference. And again, looking at the size here, comparing the Fujifilm, and then again, comparing it to Tamron. I think that's really what you're looking at. If you're looking for size and weight, I think you just can't beat the Sigma. If you're looking for optical image quality, my guess, uh, based on all the reviews I've seen so far, is that this will outperform this lens here. But I, I, in the end, I don't really care. I want the slightly wider lens. I don't mind that it stops at 18 because 18 is my favorite focal length. Now something like the X Pro 3, the, the optical view frame lines only goes to 23. And so I can't use this lens here in optical. Well, let's just put it on here. I can't use it in optical uh, viewfinder mode, but it'll still work on here, right? Look at that. Kind of weird putting zoom lenses on the X Pro 3, but I've put the XF 10 to 24 on here while traveling and vlogging, and so it works. And so if this is your one and only camera, there is no IBIS uh, and there is no OIS in here, so if you are vlogging, you can go all the way to 10 and then digitally stabilize it in software. But I think something like an XS20 or an XS10 or a X-T4, any of the front articulating screens, uh, this will be great for vlogging, but for landscape and for, for me, for street photography, this is all the range that I really need. Basically, you're getting a 28, you're getting a 24, getting a 21, you are, I don't know what 12 would, 12 would be, 12 would be like 18 equivalent, and then 15 millimeter equivalent. And so, super excited to get this out on the street. Now, this is just my first look. There is no images from this. But again, if you are uh, really anxious about the IQ, just go to YouTube, uh, type this lens in. Most of it is in Sony, but again, I think Gordon Lang used an A6400, so it does have an APS-C sensor. That'll give you a better idea of the optical image quality of this. Um, but I'm looking forward to testing it and really testing it against the Tamron 11 to 20 and Fujifilm's own 10 to 24, which has been my main travel lens for many, many years, including my recent trip to Stockholm. This is the lens I took and the uh, 3514. That's all I really need to travel. And so for me, I think maybe these two and maybe including the 18 to 55, uh, 18 to 50, sorry, f2.8 would be basically, um, 2.8 would be the slowest speed I have. And so I think that's going to be my new travel kit. And so thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for a Fuji Love article as well as a in the field vlogging. This is my first test vlogging with the Sigma 10 to 18. At f2.8, just look at the specs here, at f2.8. Set at 1 60th of a second shutter speed because I am shooting at 30 FPS 4K. And then I have it on auto ISO, which is at 640, which is the minimum for the settings for this video. And then I do have a variable ND filter here. So this is like wide open variable ND. And so even without this, it still would be way too bright. And so I'm actually, this is pretty good right here at f2.8, but just to kind of show you the, the bokeh of f2.8 using this lens and just kind of logging around, it's not too bad. And here we go, so I'm at 10 mil, and now I'm at 12 mil. I think 12 mil is probably, in general, from outside, I can kind of safely pull my arm out as far as I can, but if I was in a restaurant, really tight space, I would definitely go wider like this, 
like that. But it is nice to go. So I'm at 10 mil here. All right, now switch over to Fujifilm XF 1024 at f4, 1 60th of a second, ISO 640. But again, I have this variable ND filter, so wide open. It's like this, it's still a little bit overexposed. So it's pulled down a little bit like this. And this is what it looks like. And I'm not sure if you can tell the difference between f4 and f2.8 in terms of bokeh. If I was maybe in a, in a more confined space, it would be a little bit better to see. And as well, between these two lenses, one stop in terms of brightness. So if I was, if it was much darker, and I'll do different tests in low light, maybe like inside my car, having that one stop is useful. And so this is what this lens, and also it should be about the same width, right? Same field of view, 10, and then here's where I said 12, no, see, this goes from 10 to 14. And so you have to kind of guess 11 and 12, where the other lens with the Sigma is a lot easier. But I feel comfortable around here, I think, if I am outdoors. Even 10 outdoors is fine. This is nice. And then this goes, of course, all the way to 24, which is nice if you need it. It's a great all-around lens, not just for vlogging or architectural wide angle. 24 is about a 36 mil equivalent, so that's pretty darn good, but vlogging is not so good. I'd want to be down around 12 here, but let's go to 10. All right, so from now from here, let's switch over to the Tamron. All right, switch over to the Tamron 11 to 20. It protrudes out quite a bit more, so it feels like it's closer, but it, I am at 11 mil. It is a little bit narrower uh, field of view uh, versus the Sigma and the Fujifilm, but only by one mil. But I think even in the other video I did with this lens, you could see the difference between the Fujifilm and the Tamron, the one mil difference. And so I'm not sure if you could see that here. And again, I have the variable ND filter. So this is like wide open like this, but the variable ND, it still gives a little bit of ND even when it's at maximum. And I have to bring it over to about here. Looks about right. So 1 60th of a second, F2.8, ISO. 640 auto white balance and this is what this lens looks like and I am using the X-T4 so there is in body uh, image stabilization in this uh, video as well and so that should help and what do you guys think now for vlogging of the three that I've done so far the Sigma 10 to 18 f2.8 is the best it's the most compact it's at 10 it is actually it actually zooms out but still it's a very compact lens this is the most protruding lens. It feels much closer. So maybe a little bit less, um, probably a little bit better to use uh, in terms of vlogging, the 10 to 18 definitely for sure. But uh, for architectural wide angle, and also this goes to 20, so you're getting closer to, so 20 is gonna be like a 30 mil, uh, 10, to, 10 to 18. I think I like that that range. And so let's do one more test and uh, we'll just switch over right now. All right, this is the last test. Uh, this is the Viltrox uh, 13 millimeter F1.4. So just to see, you could definitely see the, the bokeh difference when you use this. The depth of field is very shallow with this. And this is really good if you are in a low light situation or if you really want bokeh. And I do have the variable ND at maximum darkness here so you could see here let me just turn this here like that this is this is as dark as I can make this and if I set this here you can see how even at auto ISO it can't handle it because ISO 640 is a minimum and so the only other way you could do is adjust the shutter speed uh, but it's fixed at, at, at uh, 1 60th of a second and what do you guys think for vlogging this is the heaviest of the three lenses four lenses I've tested uh, it is a fixed 13.14, so it's not necessarily a vlogging lens. It's a super fast uh, ultra wide angle prime lens. But if you needed the speed, this lens would come in handy for sure. But in daylight like this, on all four lenses, I've had to put a variable ND if I want to shoot in the settings that I have. And it'd be even worse if I was shooting at 24 frames a second, so I'll be shooting at 1 48th of a second. And so I would really struggle. So I would need a even stronger variable ND than I have. This is, to be honest, I don't even know what ND this is. It's a, it's a KNF uh, ND filter, but I don't know what the range is. But uh, this is just the minimum necessary to be able to vlog. And so what do you guys think? I think uh, in terms of bokehlicious, obviously this lens here, but overall for size, weight, and range, the Sigma. So let's just put the Sigma back on. 
All right, have the Sigma 10 to 18 at f2.8, 1 60th of a second, ISO 640, variable ND. So let's just show you that. That's the maximum ND, and this is the minimum right there. So definitely you need this when you're out and about. There you go. And I'm at, where am I at here? Here you go. I'm at 10 here, and this is, uh, this is 12. And this is 14 so 14 not too bad it's kind of tight but 10 outdoor not using a stick or anything I'm just basically cupping the um, and let's just even get my iPhone here and just show you here let's grab my iPhone and then show myself vlogging which is even looks even crazier but here we go this is my setup here iPhone here we have the Rode video micro Rode Vio Micro XT4, the 10 to 18 f2.8 at f2.8. You can see all my settings over here, and this is me now walking with the setup here. So, what do you guys think? I think this lens, more than just vlogging, it's going to be a great architectural lens. And for me, as a street photographer, I like ultra wide street. And then, like for me, 18 millimeter on APS-C, so about a 28 mil equivalent, is just perfect for me for street photography so even for me as a street photographer lens and then boom if I need to go ultra wide I could do that with this lens the X-T4 uh, XS20 or the XS10 would be better for vlogging it is a smaller lighter uh, compact body but it has IBIS and so the new XS20 would probably be better for this type of thing but good enough for me for now and so if you are shooting within the Fujifilm ecosystem this and you vlog this lens is awesome and if you also like ultra wide to uh 18 millimeter right so 10 to 18 that's the only i wouldn't call it negative but uh, for those that are looking you can go to 20 mil with the tamron but it's 11 to 20. the fujifilm's own 10 to 24 is great as an all-arounder it's a fixed f4 build quality is great it's a 72 mil fil filter thread the rest of the lenses i tested are all 67 which is great because i'm using an adapter a 72 mil uh, variable ND and then step it down so it covers the full range you don't get any vignetting with this and um, yeah beautiful lens made in Japan it's all plastic but it's it feels like really well constructed and optically I'm gonna have to do more tests but for vlogging this is great so thank you for watching more tests coming up uh, especially for stills I've done some stills tests already like the image quality so far and I'm going to be comparing it with the Tamron and Fujifilm's own lens. And so that's it. We'll talk to you soon. Happy shooting.